filming locations. Yeah, it says Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, and London, England. Um, that's as specific as it gets. Now, there's some really, really fun settings in this. You know, th this is one of those, you know, it's, it's an MCU movie, so it has a lot of different settings, and that is a mandate. You know, they, they, that's a, that's a way they try to increase, you know, the, the ba basically, like, if you, if you only have, like, one or two settings, eh, you know, you you can only get people who are you know if you if you're getting people hyped for that you can only hype them for those two but if you have like seven then you can you know put little bits of all of them in trailers and posters and get people to to theorize about where it is and what's going to happen there and and such and yeah, this movie does a really great job making it feel natural, even though it's mandated. All the places look different from each other. And yeah, I gotta just briefly talk about there's some there's some very, very fun settings in this. One of the places the the High Evolutionary runs this you know, there's this company uh, I think they called it or Orogo Core or some or Orgo Core, and you know that thing about if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, if you can make like biological anything, then why do we? Why do we have? Why do you have buildings of, of like steel? Let's make let's make a big building that's just out of like flesh, and then when people get into the building, they're they're walking on flesh, and if they wanna like you know access a control panel, they gotta you know jam their hand into some mushy, nasty, gross flesh and yeah it's it's you know because because like there's you know there's a there are a number of things that creep us all out when when you have this kind of you know messing around with with living things kind of thing there's there's some ethical issues raised and you know and the movie does get into to you know but, you know, you could all also just make, like, some really nasty creatures that make people go, yeah. and James Gunn does that, and you could make it this thing that, like, basically, yeah, the, he, he, made, a, he made a building out of, out of flesh, and people are walking around on flesh, sticking their hands into flesh to, to activate things, and it's just... Very, very, very disgusting, and I love it. And then there's this place called Counter Earth that's supposed to look like Earth, and it's just it's so fun how they made all these things that's very much like Earth, but there's just little, little differences. And they go to this place that's basically America, and instead of the Statue of Liberty, it's a statue of the High Evolutionary, and, like, yeah, just, you know, who's who's got a real god complex, and the statue's really there to, to feed that, you know, and, yeah, like, the, the, you know, they have, like, this, there's this suburb, and, you know, you have these, like, humanoid animals you know walking around with, with clothes and they've got cars and houses and yeah it's just it's it's very very yeah and we do see the the places where the, the high evolutionary does his experiments and they you know there's this very real like dehumanized kind of 
ah, what's the word? Like basically, there's it, there's there's some of like hospital kind of clean to the point where it's like sterile and and just really really inhuman, but also this element of like. It's a it's a lab. It's a you know it's a place where things are done, and we just we we get it's it's a job you know. So it's a very very yeah, really really creepy and and off putting. And that brings us to the music, which is handled by John Murphy, who also composed for the holiday special for the suicide squad that's right he it's not the same guy as the movies the other movies but he did uh, that's right yeah he he worked on sunshine 28 weeks later let's see 28 days later yeah he he worked with um, in in general, he's worked a lot with the, the um, Danny Boyle, the the director of Sunshine and Twenty Eight Days Later, and executive producer of Twenty Eight Weeks Later. And yeah, he does a really solid job. Maybe it's because it's so much darker. Maybe that's the because those are some dark movies. That might be why the the change. I want to say it was a Tyler Bates who did the other ones. He also did a really solid job. There's some excellent sound design. Like I mentioned, you know, there there are on more than one occasion you see people jam their hand into the the gooey and and each time makes the splorch noise and it's just like please never do that again kind of thing. It's just it's yeah, love it. And you know, it's a it's a comic book. It's supposed to be weird. If it's not weird, why aren't we, you know? Just there's there's so many normal movies. There's so many movies that don't have weird and and you know concepts that just yeah. Let's see and. Yeah, I, I personally found this to be very well paced, but for sure, like, I get, you know, some people are going to feel like it's just too long. If you don't watch any, it's, you know, yeah, if you don't stay through the, the credits, the movie, let's see, is two, hour, two hours and 17 minutes before the end credits start rolling. So, that is definitely, that is a lot. You know the the um, um, I will momentarily have the um, the first one was two hours and one minute the second two hours and sixteen minutes so you know each time it gets a little longer and yeah I I get why some people might feel like it's excessive. But I do disagree. This, yeah, the the best element. It's it's a bit of a, a tie. You know, more of the Guardians, a satisfying finish to the trilogy, and Gunn's tenure with them. I thought it did a really great job. Um, the um, what's the word? The themes of it, I felt really, really resonated. Now, worst aspect, um, yeah, uh, there are definitely, there are parts that are problematic. Now, yeah, so I, I did see some people say that they felt like there was too much going on in the movie. Some people felt it got too dark. And... the Yeah, the thing I was most worried about was definitely, you know, that like 
on my initial viewing of the second one. It felt like it was trying to be ten times bigger than the first due to the success, which was clearly unexpected. Like they were hoping that people would like it, but it was a much bigger deal. I do now love the second movie, but I gotta say that very first time it didn't completely connect with me, you know, and I mean, I suppose maybe for some people it will feel like that. I think, um, yeah, I don't know, it just, it absolutely worked for me. Now, yeah, the thing I was most looking forward to was spending more time with the Guardians, and it absolutely delivered. This is the kind of movie, like, the moment that it started, I was like, yes, this is it, this is awesome. You know, right from right away, we get like some some just brief glimpse at oh this character that I remember, and it's just it just works. The trailers do give too much away, but also give you a good idea of what the movie is like. Now the cover and poster don't. Uh, hold on, I'll check each of. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah, no, it uh, it they they don't give too much away. Now, and and do give you a decent idea of what the movie is like, and that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes. It has an eighty percent. There are one hundred and sixty critic reviews, and one hundred and twenty eight of them are fresh which makes it fresh, and 7.30 out of 10 is the, uh, the, the typical rating. The consensus says, a galactic group hug that might squeeze a little too tight on the heartstrings, the final Guardians of the Galaxy is a loving last hurrah for the MCU's most ragtag family. And on Metacritic, it has a 67 out of 100, Based on 47 critic reviews, 29 positive, 17 mixed, 1 negative. Yeah, uh, so I'll briefly quote the, the negative. The movie offers about 3,000 subplots and 2,000 supporting characters. So yeah, they felt like it's overstuffed, and I definitely do understand where they're coming from. And on IMDb, it has an 8.3 out of 10, based on 3,200. Yeah, 3,200 votes. 34.5 percent gave it a 10. 24.3 gave it an 8. 23.2 gave it a 9. 10.8 gave it a 7, 3.3 3 gave it a 6. I find it difficult to... I, it's wild to me that anybody gave it 6 or less, but okay. 1.8% gave it 1. That seems very high. I, I have to wonder if at least some of those are people who were pissed off that he got hired back by Marvel. Now, uh, yeah, and, and one point, yeah, one point one percent gave it five, zero point four percent gave it two, another zero point four gave it four, and zero point two gave it three. So yeah, by and large, very very well received. And let's see. So yeah, I've talked some about the special effects. There's also some really great stunt work. Like, there are times in this where, like, it really feels like, oh, wow, that must have hurt. That punch or throw must have really, really hurt. And, yeah, the the violence, like, it's very, very, it, get, it goes pretty far. It gets kind of gory and, like, you know, there's limbs coming off and and like 
yeah, it's it goes very, very far for a PG-13. Now, there will be a couple of links to YouTube videos in the description box, reviews that I felt were, you know, yeah, made a lot of sense. And, yeah, um, I rate this nine amazing finales for the Guardians out of ten. And this is a movie that I would be happy to watch again, like, tomorrow. You know, I, I very, rarely, very rarely go back to the movie theater, you know, so, so, yeah, but... Let's see. Yeah, I, I won't be doing that, but this is a time where, like, it, yeah, this, this is really, really amazing. Now, that brings us to the, and, and it is also, like, you know, I think it will be a very, it will be a crowd pleaser, you know, it really pulls, puts you through the ringer, but there are laughs and there are things that will make you smile and, and be happy. Just, you know, don't, don't watch it if your day is going badly. Like, be, you should probably enter with a really happy constitution so that when it drags you down, it doesn't like drag you so far down that when it then pushes back up that that's no longer gonna work for you you know kind of thing um, yeah yeah uh, this is it's it's better than Eternals for me and almost as good as Wakanda forever so yeah the, the, uh, hold on this is this is the my fifth favorite MCU movie so far the only ones above it are Wakanda in in order Wakanda forever Civil War Infinity War and Endgame so yeah and that is it for the spoiler-free review. So from here on out, there will be full spoilers for this movie. So be aware. And I'm going to get into note, uh, yeah, notes taken while watching. So these are in chronological order. Think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, or the like. And, you know, I, yeah, I ended up running out of, I, I, I spent the entire, you know, I had a, another pad of paper, but, you know, the only thing that was left when I ran out was the, the mid-credits and post-credits, so I'll start with those. So we, yeah, the mid-credits scene, we meet the new Guardians team, which if I recall, it featured one of the little children, who now does speak English, featured um, Adam Warlock. We, of course, have, you know, Rocket was made the captain. Groot is still on the team. Kraglin was... Yeah, I think those were them, and they're all talking about their favorite music. And then we see them get ready to fight... And I've you know for sure like if the if next guard if next time we see the guardians I don't know if they're gonna make more straight up guardians movies but certainly the guardians could appear in some something else you know yeah I think you know yeah people would be very happy to see this team and the post credit scene it's Peter and Jason talking. You know, Peter's eating eating cereal, and Jason is reading the paper, and it's basically like the thing of you know, oh, kids these days. He says that the 
the other kid is 45, I guess. Let's see, if if Peter so I got I gotta get the I gotta get the um the years straight. Peter When was it the first movie? I think I think the first movie starts in eighty eight. Yes, Peter Quill was born in 1980, and this is post End Game, so we we went ahead five years. I think the MCU is currently in like 2026 or something like that. So he's 46. No, wait, no, because he he didn't age in those five years. He's 41, I guess, and yeah. You know, so so it is, because I was wondering if they were maybe two different, uh, what's the word, two different generations, but I guess they're the same generation. But yeah, you know, it's it's that thing. You know, kids kids these days, they just don't they don't don't want to work kind of thing. Anyway, back to the start of the movie. So yeah, the the opening the Marvel logo at the start is focused on the Guardians, which I approve of, and we open on, yeah, b before anything else, we see Rocket picked for later tests, and it zooms in on Baby Rocket and zooms back out of Adult Rocket's fur face, and we follow Rocket around nowhere as the credits play and see various events unfold and he goes to Peter who passes out drunk again and yeah they set up the gravity boots and The yeah, I I I already mentioned the review itself. That I really like the the bad dog running gag, but yeah. So you know, Cosmo is watching Craglin struggle with the arrow, and she said, you know, and she shows that with telekinesis, she can do a better job. She can, you know, hit the the various things that he was trying to, to hit. So she basically kind of embarrasses him in front of everyone. And so he says, you're a bad dog. And she's like, you take that back. And just, yeah. It's... And... Yeah, they, they talk about, you know, can't can't Mantis, you know, touch him and make him, you know, and she's like, no, that, you know, you shouldn't do that to friends, which I think is also why later when Drax tricks her and they drive off in the, why she doesn't touch Drax for, for that. And, you know, apparently, you know, yeah, so... Um, Drax says something like, then why was it okay for you to make me th fall in love with my sock? And she says, because that was hilarious, or some something like that, which, that does sound very, very funny. I, yeah. And the, the, um, yeah, the, the, there was the, you know, maybe we could touch him and the other way, you know, and, and yeah, that was a, a fun discussion. And Adam attacks. He's going nowhere fast. And let's see. Yeah, and so the, the you know, he's clearly extremely strong, and he sure likes to body slam people. And Groot attacks him, and I really love that, like, 
when Groot wants to fight dirty, he'll fight dirty. Like it, you know, he he covers Adams, you know, but he also like did he go up his? I think he went up his nose and like I don't think he went in. Did he go into the eyes also? I, I forget, but like it it was pretty pretty messed up. And Adam rips off Groot's head, which, like, holy crap, you know. And and yeah, that I mean, that'll do it. It he doesn't have to kill Groot, which I guess is that entirely. Is it even possible to kill Groot? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, and and you know the the arrow is is you know goes fly because yeah. And we're sitting there like, come on. This is your moment, Cracklin. You got it. You you got your chance now. You can show them. You know, and it just like it hits. But he, I guess it's because his skin is too thick. Yeah, I'm I'm not one hundred percent sure if it was that or the, but it's, yeah, it certainly didn't hurt Adam. And yeah, some really brutal action from right away, like. Bone breaking and just yeah, and they try to help Rocket with the med kit, but you know it, the the what's it called, yeah the the thing, for yeah it it doesn't go so well, and Groot is now ahead with with legs, which is very 1982 the thing, and I absolutely love it. And Lila soothes Rocket in the in the flashback. I think they did a really good job in with all the the flashbacks. Like if I had heard going into it, oh, there's gonna be like I don't know ten separate flashbacks to you know I might have thought that was excessive, but yeah. And honestly, like at first I was like, wow, those are really creepy. But yeah, I kind of got to, like now it's. Yeah, I mean it's it's messed up to make them like that, but it's you know you got to care for the all four of them. We already cared about Rocket, but the other three. Let's see, and yeah, we get the uh, you know Hollywood loves a ticking clock. Forty eight hours f is how much Rocket has left to live. I have to go to or go cop corp. I like the flashback where the the four of them are playing. Let's see. And we meet the the high evolutionary in the present, and he uses telekinesis to punish Adam and the high priestess. And and Peter expresses that he feels like everyone around me dies, so he can't lose Rocket, too. And Mantis suggests he visit his his grandpa. Let's see. And yeah, you know, Peter says, well, he would be like he would be in his nineties, so he might still be alive. I don't know. People in on Earth die at the age like fifty. They die at age 50? I don't know. Let's see. And Gamora comes into the movie and Um, I have no idea what that note means. Maybe I'll, yeah, I'm just going to move on. Uh, oh, right, right. Um, yeah, we, we, yeah, batch 90 is absolutely horrifying. And Rocket helps fix batch 90. And instead of, you know, it doesn't make the high evolutionary think, this is wonderful, you know, of someone else that's really smart. It makes him hate Rocket. 
because how could Rocket be better than it? You know, it's essentially that that's the that's the worst. You know, if if you are a parent and you feel a need to be better than your children instead of seeing strengths in your children as being a good thing, you know, maybe you're not cut out to be a parent. And yeah, Peter says, I miss you so much. You are both on comms right now. And we get the explanation of the colors and, you know, yeah. Peter and the audience are like, that doesn't make any sense. But it was I think it was Drax who said it's very intuitive. And the you know they managed to to get in, and of course it's it's you know there's a there's an alert, so the the guards come check, and the you know and Peter is like, what the heck are you guys do? Are you do you want everybody to die? You know this kind of, and and Mantis jumps on, and then Drax almost completely ruins it. Do you not see? how convincing these uniforms are they fit some of us better than others sure you know just wow and and peter manages to say, you know, uh, it's, uh he's like it's the you know i'm i'm kind of stuck with this guy you know and and nathan Finley is like ah i know like just like this guy he's just I thought I heard something else, you know, and Mantis accidentally lost the space because she thought it was a, she thought that it was like a, a closet kind of thing, but no, it was the, the, you know, what's it called, like a, yeah, it, it shot the spacesuits into space. And Gamora, I don't know if it's because she doesn't like them or because she doesn't remember their names. Honestly, yeah, I don't think it's because she doesn't remember their names. I think it's because she doesn't like them. She doesn't want to be working with them. So she calls them Bug and Doofus instead of Mantis and Drax. And, and this is where I feel like, I mean, that's...